<laughs> oh god it was in the 80s it was like he touched me he's like yeah but give it an hour and, and if he's still <laughs> touching you I'll come and get you and we were so bored that we knew it was an electric fence mm. and we would still touch it <laughs> just to see A if it was on and B if it was as painful yeah as it was supposed to be and see how far the electric current <laughs> passed through how many friends <laughs> It's time to adjust those shoulder pads, back comb what's left of your hair, and jump into the DeLorean for a look back at what's possibly the best decade anyone could ever have grown up in. Shall we play a game? This is Bring Back the 80s with your hosts, James Alderson and me, Andy Jackson. Welcome to another edition of the Bring Back the 80s podcast. James, Hello. you're looking a little bit the worse for wear today. Well, I feel fine. That's how we all felt in the 80s. Everything's fine. Nothing's wrong with me. And you'd come back in and your mum would be like, what the hell's happened? And then she'd cake you in some sort of Dettol TCP situation. Um, that wouldn't hurt at all, of course. Um, cauterised it perfectly. And then cover you in plasters and then you go back out playing. Um, so that's what's happened. I've been wherever I want to be. Do what you want to do. That's how it was. It's all about playing out for episode number nine today. And I was just thinking about this on the way in. Mm. And we would literally leave the house first thing in the morning, yep. as soon as after breakfast had gone. And then you wouldn't see your parents, your mum and dad, anybody else until the streetlights came on yes. in the evening. Unless you got hungry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then you might nip back if you couldn't nick a two-piece sweet from somewhere to keep you going. Um, but yeah, yeah, uh, it's it, it was just a free-for-all. On it. You just went out and found stuff to do. Normally in a, in a derelict house. <laughs> <laughs> or a building site. <laughs> building site and there's some woods somewhere where there was nothing to worry about. There's a lot of den building going on in dens, those days. A lot of dens, a yeah. lot of knocking on doors and running away. Um, all that sort of shizzle. So yeah, and, and, and often obviously it would involve bending down somewhere trying to get into a hole that you shouldn't get into. That doesn't sound <laughs> right. <laughs> but doing stuff that would often involve cracking your head open or grazing your elbows or knocking your cheek or fighting with sticks climbing scaffolding that was usually slash playground and um yeah maybe uh the back of a horse's head uh, one of those metal horses would come back and hit you in the <laughs> yeah. face because you weren't in rhythm with your mates yeah you'd launch off of a, a bloody i don't know witch's hat where the frig it was called and you'd go sideways across the playground <laughs> straight onto the concrete as well no none yeah. of your soft matting none of this bouncy stuff no none of that stuff so people just literally go into hospital mm. after playing on the approved playing machinery yeah having a nice time yeah and ending up in casualty <laughs> it was it was just the best way and a lot of worried parents but a lot of not worried parents He's fine. <laughs> that was the thing, wasn't it? I know that now it's the whole helicopter parenting. Kids are not, you know, if kids are allowed outside, there's always a parent, a sort of, or a grandparent hovering to make sure that nothing untoward yeah. is going on. Yeah. And uh, back then, though, no sign of parents, no sign of carers, no. no. Just get on with it. Oh, I'm, Go sure and live was, it. Yeah. I'm sure there were some nice parents, but most parents were just angry if you hurt yourself. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell have you done? <laughs> get in! <laughs> Uh, my arm back to front <laughs> but it was a way of learning I, i'm gonna say i'm gonna say life skills mm. because i think now when kids go out that everything is so overprotected that they don't get to make their own choices mm. when it comes to dangerous things mm. maybe that's a good thing i think it might be a good thing <laughs> maybe <laughs> you shouldn't have done that on the motorway you know now you learn <laughs> and parents just shaking their head going he'll learn that was the slogan of parents you know you've burned your yourself in a chip pan you're like you'll learn won't yeah. you you only do it once you <laughs> well, don't, you're not gonna do that again yeah because i'll look at my hand that's melted for the rest of my life and i'll understand and it'll remind me yeah so it, there wasn't the parent but parents were i mean my mum was a lovely mum, and she was always around and she was always came with me to places i was a single kid and stuff so it was nice and she'd be there to watch me play football or whatever she was doing and it but i was unusual unusual you know most parents weren't sat watching kids play there's a three-year-old in the sand pit or the mud pile or whatever it was in the corner of the playground and they were just head first in it and there was no parent to be seen i wonder if there was a thing eating mud there was <laughs> if there was a thing for you know, where the parents never went through that stress of losing a child because mm. i remember when, when i took one of my kids on holiday once and we lost 
we lost him mm. just for about 20 minutes or so yeah but at the time yeah like there's no you you just go into a blind panic yeah but if the parents were not there or they were very much at arm's length yeah. perhaps they've saved themselves the stress from yeah from if you, yeah outside time. our mind i think i think also the the thing is that the the paedophiles came to the fore in the 70s and 80s they really were a big selling item weren't they <laughs> they were everywhere <laughs> and i think that our parents possibly the war and post-war generation who were playing in old bomb sites and stuff you know and they were literally just pushed out to you know do whatever it doesn't matter you're playing in the bomb site it doesn't matter it's fine isn't it a bit of fun then when we came around, their, our parents were like, well, it doesn't matter, does it? They're playing out. And now we look back and think, shit, mm. we were playing out, and those guys in vans were everywhere, and now we know about them. <laughs> you know, not only were they everywhere, they were on the fucking telly. You know, they were, you name it, they were absolutely everywhere. And now we look back and think, Christ, no, no, no. don't play out. <laughs> don't go out <laughs> in the daylight. You're mad. So now I think the kids, teenage and 20-somethings who are going to be parents now – it's almost like, oh, 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 I don't know what they're going to suggest. Maybe it's going to come back round. Maybe they're going to start saying, no, go out, get off your screens, get back in the fresh air. It's difficult, isn't it? I can't difficult. imagine it. Somehow. It is difficult. I like to put, when I've got, when I've got my grandkids with me, I like to put an air tag on them so that if they do wander off, That's I, can, a great I can see where they are. Yeah. And I got, I, I got that from my daughter, and she she like proper air tags them up. And I thought, what an actually genius idea well, that it's is. it's better than the early 2000s invention that came along, which was lead. On kids, to <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> retract, <laughs> <laughs> so that, that was really prolific. When my boys were young, there was a lot of let me, let's say unhinged kids yeah. that were on leads around Tesco, and I think that is where you just got to give up. <laughs> Don't bother having being a parent anymore <laughs> if you've got such little control over your child that they've got to be, be tethered. The leads, yeah. <laughs> Oh, it's, it's sad though because, uh, because now you say that though the, I think a lot of the times the parents have given up because those kids that should be on leads a lot of them are now loose. not on leads yeah. and they're loose and they're <laughs> doing exactly what they like knowing <sighs> that nobody can do Maybe nobody can touch them nobody no. can do well literally them. yes now, literally that's, that's a good thing yes <laughs> <laughs> oh god it was in the 80s it was like he touched me it's like yeah but give it an hour and if he's still touching you I'll come and get you <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How many sweets yeah. did you get? You know, were the puppies nice? It was always, I don't know, it was one of those things. And you couldn't even, you couldn't even phone, phone them really. Because, you know, if there was something wrong, it was, you were always within 15, 20 minutes of home, weren't you? So you just yeah. make your way home. Um, and it, it, or if you really weren't enjoying yourself, you just wander back on your own. It would be a common thing, seeing a kid wandering along the street, kicking a can just on his way back because he'd fed up with or fallen out with his mates or something had happened. So I guess that was the only backup plan, wasn't it? Just go home. Go home. That's yeah. all you could do. Like you say, there was no, there was no way phoning home no. um, unless you could find a phone, phone box, box and you had your 2p or your yeah. 10p to just do that. Just put VHS on. Yeah. Chill. <laughs> just chill out. Uh, VHS and chill. VHS Better than Netflix, chill. isn't it? Yeah, very good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, right, uh, we've got, you were talking about pedos. We're going to be looking at... Um, looking at them. Looking at we're pedos. Look at a few pedos. At pedos. We're, we're gonna... trying to catch all of the mar- viewer market. <laughs> Hopefully YouTube is full of them. We're going to double our listeners. What are the, what are the chances? We're going to mop up here, mate. So there's going to be... <laughs> it's a very specific category. Everything that, <laughs> everything that you've talked about yeah. today, oh. the government was trying to teach us about rather were than they? our parents. So we we'll get to that Great. shortly. First of all, though, I uh, must just uh, do the winner of the mystery sound. This oh, yeah. was what it was last time around. It's the mystery. Gee. You know what that is, don't you? It's a rewind. Yes. Um, and I think that's an auto stop, I think. It but is uh, an auto stop. You see, you'd wor- worry rewinding because it'll go, and go oh, stop it! Because <laughs> it'll go ping and pull the tape off. Um, but yeah, so it was uh, It was always a. Well, it seemed magical, didn't it? Having an a automatic. Cassette, yeah. It was uh, on the little cassette and on the video cassette, the little cassette, which bizarrely are making a comeback now. Yeah. So how long is it going to be before VHS yeah. comes back? Fingers round as crossed well. it will. There's something about it. I just forgot I had a plaster on my face. It's like, what's happened to my skin? It's even more haggard. Um, yeah, I, you know, 
There was a time where cassette players only had a rewind. It didn't have fast forward. So you'd have to turn, turn the tape it over, over yeah, rewind, yeah. and then turn it back over because you'd effectively fast forward it, of course. Um, so that... Yeah, the auto stop and all that sort of stuff was very clever, wasn't it? Just done purely by mechanical means. Well, yeah, it? it's so struggling. Like a, like a spring or something. Mm. Well done to Loopy T, who oh. is de- definitely a name from the Blast of the Blast from a previous uh, place that I used to be. Oh, okay. So, Loopy T, well done for getting that. It was the cassette rewind. Yeah. A lot of people got it. Oh, this time I'm not out. surprised. I bet they didn't say the auto stop, but the rewind. There was a couple that yeah. did say the auto stop. Yeah, so, we good. Were, uh, oh, yeah. good. so, well, well done, everybody. On, yeah. We've got a new one for you this time. Now, this might be even easier, or it might be a lot harder depending on what kind of a child you had childhood you had mm-hmm. here it comes <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness what we need yeah. is specifics mm. we need specifics okay so if you know what that sound is uh, let us know via the usual channels we're on the youtube and yeah. the twitter and that you know all that stuff there yeah uh, let us know what it is we'll do a draw in a couple of weeks to find out who has one tickets to do another one of james's yeah. amazing comedy shows you can come to any of them we're anywhere between sort of southampton and worthing and up to sort of alton and guildford area uh, or you can get a t-shirt bring back the ages t-shirt and we'll post it to you free post free post, <laughs> free post, yeah, free blue post. Peter. <laughs> okay don't even need to send in a stamped <laughs> stamp dressed envelope or jiffy yeah <laughs> here we go so if you know what that is uh, do let us know the uh, answer will be revealed very very shortly a couple yeah. of weeks or so uh, right so we were talking about uh, some of the uh, ways that the uh, government were getting involved in teaching us Bless them. the errors of our ways we mm. do have some of those public information films oh. coming lately what I did notice when I was putting them together was that they a lot of them seemed to be, seemed to be themed around the same kind of scenario okay it will all become clear later oh. on but, but just before we do that I just want to remind you of an advert this is if you were lucky enough to be um you know have a little tiny bit of disposable income or your parents did there was one thing that you always <coughs> would hanker after hello richard you're not still on about this bike are you i remember when bikes were bikes proper mud guards and a cover for the chain look at that saddle they're like sitting on a razor blade Maybe next year, eh? Yeah. How'd you get on, love? I think I found one. Great. Ropers. Says I'll keep it till weekend. You better give us the address, then. Good old yellow pages. We're not just there for the nasty things in life, like a leaky roof. We can help with the nice things, too. I'm all right about that saddle, though. It there was. we go. Yep. So if you were lucky, if you, if you if you couldn't have a bike off the shelf, you could always mm. build yourself a, a junk bike, yes. as they were called, from yeah. all the Massive smashed wheels, up pieces. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but that's right. Those, well, I mean, still, I watch them on race, racing bikes now. I think, Jesus Christ, that's going to be right <laughs> up your jacksy, isn't it? Um, I mean, that was the unusual caring dad of the 80s, yeah. wasn't it, who was around um, and bothered. <laughs> um, and obviously now... That kid, he didn't even look left and right. He wasn't. We wasn't paying attention to any of those government uh, there was no, green cross codes. There he would no have been ploughed down. To worry in about there was there. Yeah, no. the, well, there was. <laughs> they didn't give a shit, and half the time they were pissed. So he would have been ploughed down by something because he just rolled <laughs> straight out and up the lane, uh, up the road. But yeah, it, it, I mean, I don't remember. I do remember looking up shops in the yellow pages and looking up things whether maybe you would have liked up, looked up a bike shop i suppose but it was yellow pages is just one of those massive parts of our lives it used to be almost exciting when it dropped in through the letterbox i mean people watching this now who are not of that generation the yellow pages was effectively the internet without a doubt if yeah. you needed to that it was amazon <clears throat> and it was just you just had to look up Mm. By, I think it was by category, wasn't it? Yeah, by, it was, uh, yeah. yeah. Under unusual category, sometimes you'd be looking up different things and it would, bikes would crop up under funeral parlours or something. <laughs> it was like, why are they advertising <laughs> that? And that Yell.com did try in the early 2000s to get in there with the internet and they'd be phoning around all the businesses saying, you need to be listed on Yell.com. And they sort of were a bit early because I remember I ran a business back then myself and thinking, why? And then the, they still had the huge yellow pages everywhere. Mm. So you're like, why do I have to be on the internet? I don't really understand why you're telling me to be on the internet. And so, and they became a burden almost to businessmen in the early 2000s, so much so that I really think they missed it. It is still mm. about, I think, Yale.com, but I think they really missed it by being such a harassment because they were panicking about the demise of advertisers in the big book. 
and the 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 onslaught of the internet but yeah having that that was a massive part sat next to the seat which was next to the chair table uh, the telephone table <laughs> it was there and uh yeah and then you could look up your mate's number in the phone book yeah find his find his name or look for road names like mr bumhole and oh, stuff. <laughs> <laughs> we were easily amused and obviously very bored at well, that the was when it was raining and you couldn't play out of course you were talking about um mm. you know having a business and the different ways of advertising it now if you've got a business it's all about being searched engine optimised isn't course. it so you come up as the first um, thing yeah. Yellow Pages days it was about the number of A's you could have in the <laughs> name yeah. of your business because it was all done in alphabetical order yeah. wasn't it so yeah. you'd go to the section for plumbers yeah. for instance yeah. and there would be um, Aardvark, Aardvark plumbers. Plumbers, yeah. <laughs> and then Arkwright. somebody would get in the next the next year and they would have A1 Aardvark yeah. plumbers yeah. and it was that was their that A was dot the, A1 just A dot, at the A top Aardvark. of the list <laughs> yeah yeah it was the beginning of the section is always a good one or just the biggest advert you turn a page yeah. and someone will pay for a full page ad like crikey how rich are these guys but yeah yeah so you know getting getting your stuff from uh, from the yellow pages yeah pretty pretty standard procedure so out on the bike, uh, no health and safety as we uh, saw. No. But as we mentioned earlier on, um, it wasn't down to our parents really to educate us about no. uh, you know playing out safely. No. It was down to the government and they came out with um, public information films. He was stupid. Trying to prove how tough he was. I had a go at them kids. Why do you fly your kites around here, eh? We thought it would be okay, but the wind changed. Lucky they let go of it. They'd have been electrocuted. We should have told the police. Suppose you never knew about high voltage electricity. You're crazy! He ignored the danger signs. Leave it there! He was stupid. He wouldn't come down. He didn't know electricity would go through the kite. It just jumped through thin air. Climbing pylons can kill. Don't take a chance with electricity. No, or when the wind changes. No. Don't do that because your face will stay like that. Just Remember that phrase. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> face will stay like it. Well, that little girl terribly well spoken, though. We didn't yes. realise we didn't, we didn't the wind would change. For goodness sake. <laughs> Whatever could be the matter. <laughs> he seems to be lying there, dead. I think all the, like, all the actors, all the kid actors, all went to the same school, didn't oh, they? Yeah. And they all came out with standard, yeah. common, this is the common London accent yeah. or whatever. And they all ended up sounding like something out of um, Mary Poppins. Yeah, them, they? and they did, the ones who didn't get into Grange Hill yeah. ended up on those sorts of adverts. <laughs> <laughs> get off him! Um, yeah, so it was they, they, they were meant to scare, and they did. They scared the life out of you. I mean, I don't think I would have ever climbed a pylon. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I tell you, the only time I was like, "Oh, these cows and horses are nice," and you put your hand across and get stung by the fence. There were a lot more electric fences. Yeah. Back then. Now, of course, they can't have electric fences because idiots will touch it and sue the farmer or something the thing is as well though in though you know we were so bored that we knew it was an electric fence mm. and we would still touch it <laughs> just to see a if it was on and b if it was as painful yeah as it was supposed to be and see how far the electric current <laughs> passed through how many friends yeah. you touch it i'll touch you you touch him and you turn to your mate at the end you've got the biggest jolt yeah. he's gonna say up <laughs> i didn't have a i didn't have a, a kite that commonly because i didn't um i didn't could master the skill of it um but i did get this which was like a a revolutionary new invention of the 80s because frisbees of course are too common so what you have is a frisbee with a hole in it and call it an Araby. and these were like 85 86 and they were everywhere they were a huge thing i mean this was how much was this they were about seven or eight quid these things back in the 80s and they're like these infamous sort of orange yeah. flying rings by bluebird who were like the big toy maker back then and look it's the guinness book of records for the longest flight have, have a guess how far it was flown. 200 f- yards. <laughs> 1,114 feet and six oh, inches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's a good old classic, <laughs> yeah, yeah. isn't it? Feet and inches. Yeah. Um, and that was, in, um, that was in California, 1985. Um, now, they did go a bloody long way, these things. I'll let you have a fiddle. Um, and um, we're back to the playgrounds again, aren't we? And um, so... <laughs> <laughs> so yeah they were just uh, they were i don't know it was an unnecessary invention because frisbees were great 
and but that went so bloody far. Maybe it was a way of getting around the patent for frisbees. I just want to say that um, stat that you gave for the Guinness records: mm. 100, 100, 1,114 feet six inches was the longest throw of any object in history. So nothing. Oh. In the world, had ever been thrown frisbee, aerobee, child, child, whatever. <laughs> yeah, nothing had ever, nothing <laughs> had ever gone that far. I think they were amazing at, at, at how well they could be thrown. And if you got them level enough, it wasn't as bad as tough as a frisbee to throw. It would just went forever. And the amount of aerobees must have been lost over up the a tree. Years. Oh, always well, up a tree, into yeah. the bloody woods, into a into a motorway, into someone's guard. It just went, and you went as hard as you could to throw it and you the first time you threw it you're like jesus wow. christ and they were not soft they feel rubbery when you touch them but they have one in they their face rest. yeah absolutely <laughs> yeah decapitated kids no i mean they were rubber because they knew how fast they were going to be going thing is as well with these that it's almost like they were designed to be lost because the these will just hook oh, on a tree onto a tree yeah. Yeah, yeah and that would be yeah i'm surprised actually there wasn't a um, safety announcement about don't climb trees to get these get your aerobee down, down. Yeah. yeah yeah um yeah so i you know it was it was a great that you could have bust the packaging the bus- you're stressing me <laughs> okay, give out. You that back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. so yeah they were they were a great idea yeah. such a simple invention and you know mid 80s these were everywhere these orange always orange of course if you didn't have the money to spend seven or eight quid which is effectively bloody 45 quid these days on something like that the best thing that you could hope to find was that a bit of chalk a bit of chalk <laughs> just start drawing on the pavements the playground someone's wall pavements were always yeah. covered in hopscotch and yeah. um Norton like crosses, Norton crosses, targets name, to jump in. Yeah, hearts, yeah. There J was a lot of, a. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all that sort of stuff <laughs> coloured in yeah. all that stuff yeah. you know, J for A forever all that sort of thing And but often and you don't see it these days an actual lump of chalk that had was from the ground. Yes. <laughs> You'd find yeah. a bit of chalk on the edge of the playground that was coming out uh, of the, the ground, soil. Yeah. And now, you, I mean, we've got it all. I think we've taken it all somewhere. <laughs> we've, we had it all in the 80s. There's none left. You, an actual lump of chalk that yeah. you were writing with. Uh, obviously, around here, around Pompey, and you've got all the chalk pits and stuff, but I'm sure it's the same for everywhere. You'd find a bit you of would chalk. Find, you the, would find out chalk, out and it was always a somewhere. big thing when you found a bit of chalk. Yeah. And you think, well, how, you know, how can I make it like... Because <laughs> they never, <laughs> wor- never worked quite the same. Yeah, having a clumped yeah, fist yeah. And, and end up losing your nails and your knuckles but there'd be someone who'd drawn a line all the way from the playground to their house or whatever <laughs> you know I remember my be- dad obviously growing up in the, in the 50s he found a pot of paint and he painted his pathway in the <laughs> toilet outside toilet he did everything uh, and that was back then but you know, we would find different chalks or take chalks out of the house maybe or find a bit of chalk in the ground and start drawing something it was that was the entertainment. Yeah, <laughs> always, always. It's strange though that something like this mm. was effectively our iPhone <laughs> from back in. From back in, have one of these, yeah. uh, yellow pages, yeah, and you're away. For oh yeah, hours and hours. And, and maybe hours if you and end. had some money, an Aerobee or a kite yeah. to electrocute yourself with. Yeah, definitely proper fun. I can't think of what else you could do while, while you were playing out. There was the obvious, like there was football, there was throwing yeah. a frisbee or, yeah. or an Aerobee, a bit of den making. Yeah. But that was really all there was to do. Well, wasn't you'd walk there? about a bit. Walk about aimlessly, yeah. Yeah, and spend, I mean, half hours occupied getting the shit off your shoes. Because uh, <laughs> they're <laughs> everywhere. God, just, yeah. You'd just be walking around going, oh, God, who stepped in that? And you'd go, oh, James. And you'd, be, you'd end up doing the sideways shoe yeah. grind for about four miles, trying to get it out. And obviously, there's a lot of grass back then. It wasn't all concrete, so you could just wipe it backwards and forwards on that. Um, but dogs were allowed to poo wherever they wanted. Absolutely. They would not, they would not be looked after. No, they would go out. You could tell the ones that were fed was the, whatever it was that cat that dog food pedigree chum that made their poo yeah bright white. Oh, that was the yeah that was a lot of the dust that they had in that marrow bone and all that stuff yeah. they were given from the butchers. But it was good if if it was a white poo, it was handy because you, you could, could spot see it. it. Yeah, the camouflage poo not so good. <laughs> so these days, obviously, if you see a poo, it's often the same color as the pavement, and you tread in it. But back then, it was everywhere. everywhere. It yeah. was like decimating your streets and you'd walk and be chatting <laughs> and messing about with your mates with a kite <laughs> oh god um so yeah and then your mates would stay away from you for the rest of, 
exactly. If you want to relive those days, by the way, just go to any city in France. Oh, yeah. And it's still exactly it's everywhere. the same. Because oh. you're not going to get glamorous French women who always look wonderful mm. carrying a little bag of shit around with oh, them. Oh, no. Because that, you know, they would rather take the risk of treading in of it, treading in it oh, than carry okay. a bag of shit. Well, that's why we voted Brexit, of course. <laughs> so I don't want shit in our streets, take mate. Take your back control yeah, we don't of our dog shit. <laughs> take your back control of our pavements. <laughs> you keep your shit, mate. Literally. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it is great. That change is good, yes, you know, because if you play out, not that kids do a huge amount, but if they do, they haven't got that risk. You're not taking the gamble in your Gola and your Reebok uh, yes. classics. <laughs> <laughs> but what else was there to do, though, apart from a bit of football, apart from mm. aimlessly wandering around? Yeah. Uh, like you say, we touched, as if that's the right expression to use, on the <laughs> on the, on the, on the pedos yeah. lurking around. But I think it's, I, I can remember my um, parents saying to me that there was a, there, you know, don't go to that particular part of the park yeah because there was a there was a, a man there yeah but no there was no more details of no of what you know what might occur or might not occur well they wanted you to learn for yourself <laughs> <laughs> it'll learn uh, it, uh, there was flashes flashes there big, were, yeah. i mean there's a lot of flashes uh, there were a lot of, a lot of flashes and there were but they don't i don't think you get them now and that's one benefit of the internet i think it's a lot of that sort of drive and frustration of some types of guys um, is gone now. So they don't have to go out in the park and do stuff like mm. that. And they would um, always wear Max, wouldn't they? They were yeah. in the cartoons. Max like aren't such the, popular they're, thing. They're, they're they're not they? a thing, <laughs> is it? No, not really. Inspector Gadget <laughs> Mac. They're, they're just flashing in those. They never wore anything sophisticated. It's not a donkey jacket or some sort of suit, was it? But um, yeah, it, it, so playing out had its risks, didn't it, of getting touched or getting hurt or getting lost or you know getting bored there, there were so many things and i think that now there's a lot more opportunity to for kids to entertain themselves without danger i do remember as well we never used to have to carry a bottle of water with us at all times no we, we never seemed to have to drink anything ever well i think that we, we that would be the one moment where the back door would crash in although all those ribbons for the back door would suddenly get parted <laughs> and there'd be 17 kids would run in and go under the tap like that <laughs> <laughs> and then go bang again and your mum would come through and go who was that are you back and they're gone yeah. before and so it was just a two second moment where it was almost like an F1 pit stop <laughs> the kids would come in and grab a lolly maybe for yeah, the yeah, yeah. that they'd left in there two days prior so that was ready because um, you had to predict when you're going to need a lolly you couldn't just go and buy a lolly you have to predict it because you made your own and leave it in there for a day or two to the freeze. fun of it was yeah. making it wasn't it or 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 you'd hope to pop round the news agent or wait for the ice cream man to come around with lines made ice creams that's beautiful that is a thing of beauty there it it looks like you might have unscrewed it from somewhere james Shh. Um, yeah, no. I mean, these are this is the classic eighties kids. You see, yeah. Um, for some reason, they've got four ice creams between three. I'm not sure who's getting two. Uh, I'm guessing the kid with the hat. He's got money. Um, but um, yeah, the, lines made and walls. Maybe lines made more than walls. Actually, in the eighties, was just a, such a big one. And you saw this sign either strapped on a you know stuck on a, a sticker on the side of an ice cream van or you saw one you knew that the, there was a news agent up there and you can go and get 5p funny feet or a 10p something or other it was always uh, something affordable to be had wasn't yeah. there as well i mean you know you could look enviously at the kid who's got the who's got the 99 with the two flakes oh God. and the, the stuff on top but yeah, you could, you know, there was like you say there was always like a, a funny feet or yeah. a, like one of those spirally things yeah i mean the screwball was it screwballs with the bug ball going in the bottom in a sort of plastic cone they were quite expensive but I think that if you could when you were playing out if you had a 10 pence um, and you didn't need it for a phone call you'd go and bury yourself head first in the chest freezer in the news agents <laughs> dig out the best at the bottom maybe that wasn't broken in two bits um, and that wasn't solidified to the side of the fridge <laughs> you get stuck yes. with all that the solid ice <laughs> um, and, you'd, uh, and you'd go up to the counter and um, yeah you'd go up to the counter and, and, and buy it and refresh yourself ready for the next six hours of play the thing is it would be a real treat as well because you would be you know you'd be, you would have the choice of your 10 beater to phone home in case of an emergency or do you go and blow it on a, an ice cream yeah but it was it, they an ice cream was a luxury item it was a big deal well that's yeah that's why you made your own because it was not you made your own ice cream but you made your own ice pops because they were effectively free a yeah. bit of water splash of cordial or yeah, yeah. orange juice or something and uh, you know to have that felt 
felt like you know you had these treats <laughs> whenever you wanted it was in there or if you'd forgotten so yeah going to the news agent with your money definitely yeah. a treat just remembering another thing as well because you all the talk of ice creams uh you were talking about um things the den building there was always a swing as well <laughs> that was just one piece of random old wood yeah that somehow somebody yeah. had managed to tie various lengths of very precarious looking different bits of rope or, <laughs> or string yeah. it's never one piece of rope and somehow they've managed to get it right over the top of the tree yeah and that would again be hours and hours of, of yeah. entertainment but why were they always made of different tiny pieces of rope yeah. and who was the kid or how did they get it right up to the very top of the tree? I remember you'd be looking across the playground and there'd be four kids just doing that up a tree. <laughs> and you'd think, what's happening there? And you'd walk over and you'd just see through all the branches some kid right up there. And they'd be like, Darren, is it done yet? <laughs> He's like, ah! Oh. And he's trying to fight through the branches and whatever. Yeah, I mean, you'd find things. You see, finding chalk was something. But you'd also find bits of cars and you'd find rope. Yeah. And you'd, so he, they were always cobbled together, bits of rope that someone had just knotted together. You know, the top end was a daisy chain. Just trying to, <laughs> <laughs> that'll do it. It'll be fine. You know, making daisy chains, you'd often see you know, lads would be trying to build a car from the parts that they'd found. And the girls were sat in a circle singing a song, making daisy necklaces. This is all very stereotyped i know but it's that's how it was though isn't it it that was how it was and that and we were taught from an early age that that's what you did girls were pretty they cooked they did their hair they made necklaces singing songs and doing the maypole dances and we were beating each other up and rebuilding cars as you noticed in the um in the in the um safety um adverts that we were playing a lot of the girls were the ones that were saying no don't climb up the pylon sensible they were the sensible ones i think we might have time for just one more for this episode there is now a danger that has become a threat to us all it is a deadly disease and there is no known cure the virus can be passed during sexual intercourse with an infected person anyone can get it man or woman so far, it's been confined to small groups, but it's spreading. So protect yourself and read this leaflet when it arrives. If you ignore AIDS, it could be the death of you. So don't die of ignorance. Jesus. That was a public information film. <laughs> Just in case you didn't realise. Now, I know that was... I, I double-checked. <laughs> it's not a florist advert, <laughs> is it? <laughs> I, 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 I double-checked on that, because I was thinking to myself, <clears throat> AIDS... I just assumed it would be 90s, but no. 1981 yeah. was when that advert came out. And I suppose if you were like a, you know, a, a horny 17, 18, 19 year old, yeah. that, I guess that was who it was going to be targeted at. Yeah. Oh, I mean, it was definitely 80s. And uh, I mean, I don't remember it as early as that. 81. That yeah. one. 81. I mean, that was just, <sighs> it was scary. AIDS was the scariest thing. And for me personally, I was a kid, but I remember the rumours about AIDS. And you would often just want to just not go into a toilet. That was the big <laughs> thing. Don't go and sit on a toilet seat. You'll get AIDS and die. You know, and I was like 10, thinking, Christ, what? Don't touch that hand or you could get AIDS and die. You know, it was worse than COVID rumours, really. It's, I was going to say, it's, it is like COVID, but on yeah. steroids, really. Yeah, it was. It, well, yeah. Um, and, and, you know, you, don't, you might get touch a needle and die. You know, it was always, you'll get AIDS and you'll be dead. Mm. And you'll get it from something easy, simple, straightforward. That advert, obviously, talking about having sex and things, was really irrelevant to me till I was at least 12. And um, <laughs> I'm joking, of course, but um, it's the, the the ways that you could get it were huge. You know, someone talking to you and their spit comes yeah. across into your face, you're dead. It was just as simple as that. So that oh, these government, I mean, as we said at the beginning, these government warnings on TV, it was almost USSR level. It was called scariness. It was like, don't go near the chips. <laughs> don't go near a pylon. Yeah. Don't go near the water. Don't go near a gay guy. <laughs> it was anything to do with anything. Watch out. <laughs> don't 
do don't look at him don't look at them don't look at it don't go anywhere you shouldn't stay indoors it's always there's always <laughs> something to worry about isn't it in the like, 80s I suppose yeah definitely yeah, yeah. but I suppose you know we've, every generation has got something to worry about oh yeah you know we've just the kids who are who are you know kids now will remember Covid forever but yeah. we remember being emotionally um, blackmailed by the uh, by the AIDS adverts and I think the tabloids yeah. made things Oof. terribly terribly worse and the they? famous people who unfortunately ended up with AIDS, they were on the front page of everything for years yeah. until their demise, of course. So, yeah, it's uh, I mean, I, I never thought I could catch it from a climate frame. Um, <laughs> but, but when you're in the bushes somewhere, sometimes you did think, oh, needles, yeah. maybe. But um, oh, half the time we did, didn't really think about it when you were playing out, did you? I remember, I do remember the toilets, though. You know, never sit on the toilet seat. No. You know? And if you've got to go in a public toilet, yeah. hover. Yeah. Or, you know, but don't, like say, don't touch the. Never touch anything. And I think that's actually lived on with me now. Flush with your teeth. I would never. <laughs> that, try not to. Try not to touch anything that other people had, have touched. Oh. So. <laughs> <laughs> Limits things there, it does Andy. Does it, does it? <laughs> oh my goodness! And yeah. on that bombshell, yeah. on that bombshell, mm, da, da, da. Uh, we're going to be back next week with more of this. Give yeah. a reminder of the mystery sound as well next week as well. Yeah, just in case you've missed it. But this has been part one of our playing out episode. Great fun. In the meantime, you can catch James out and about doing yeah. his comedy stuff. Always as usual, Friday, Saturdays, and somewhere. Yep. Absolutely, you can be out and about. Um, as in the old days, I would say you can hear me. In- Listen as to a, that. It's a it's lovely sound. Time for the ice cream it van. It is. We're going to have to go have, now. Could not have been timed better. <laughs> I was going to say, I won't see you on the radio, but do watch this space because things might be happening. That's all I can say for now. Until then, we'll see you next Tuesday. <laughs> How funny was that? Thanks for listening to this week's edition. We'd love it if you could subscribe in your favourite podcast app. And don't forget, there's a video version on YouTube too. You can contact us using the links in the show notes and on the YouTube channel. And we'll see you next time for another edition of Bring Back the 80s.